Hi everyone, this is Mary Keurig with Front Runners Innovate, and I have with me today Suzanne Wilson. She is executive director with Water to Thrive, and as we all know, water is such a key component of our existence all around the world, and so many uh, places around the world do not have clean water, safe water. Um, I was talking with somebody in the last couple of months who literally they were going down to the river and the same water that they were bringing up to use to cook in was the same water they had used to, to clean their clothes in and do all kinds of things. It's nasty, <laughs> it's bad uh, and they know it. And then of course it pr uh, promotes disease and all kinds of crazy things. But in this context, the conversation we're having today it goes beyond just the, the the bacterial health part of it when you're talking about your nutrition and clean clothes and things like that. We're going into a little bit deeper into the subject of health, particularly uh, women's health. And so Suzanne and I are going to talk about that in a little bit. But just to know, Suzanne is uh, based out of the United States. She's in Texas and she has a background in education, which I love because I think it dovetails really nicely with what you're doing here. And Water to Thrive is a faith-based nonprofit, started in 2008. And we're going to get a little bit of the background, but let's get a little bit of Suzanne's background first. Okay, so, sure. Suzanne, welcome. Welcome. We appreciate Thank you. It. Thank you so much. Sophie <laughs> with us. Yeah. yeah. She's yeah. got to be here too. She wants to be part of the action. So, all yeah. right. Well, we, we welcome all living things, <laughs> except for, you know, bugs. But yeah. Uh, yeah, let's talk about you a little bit. Tell us uh, what brought you to the work that you're doing today. Yeah. Well, I, I grew up on a farm in Kentucky. We were, we didn't have a lot in the way of, you know, material things, but, mm -hmm. you know, I did, I, I was the first uh, college graduate in my family. And, mm -hmm. you know, when back then I was like, what am I going to do? And teaching was just, I love school. So I went into education, but always had a worldview. I, I, I taught history. So taught world civ and always had an interest in other cultures, other lands, other, you know, people. Uh, and I think that's just so important. We are one common humanity. So as a teacher, um, I had an opportunity to go with Rotary. They had a program called Group Study Exchange. So I applied for it, was chosen, and it ended up a month in Nigeria. So mm -hmm. if you've ever been to Africa, it sort of gets in your blood. Mm -hmm. uh, went back in a study program with Indiana University as a teacher to write curriculum for other teachers. I went to Cameroon. So mm -hmm. there was that Africa tie. Um, my career path, you know, I went into nonprofit management, uh, was at a, a college in Kentucky. But then when I got back from Africa, I'm like, you know what? I love Rotary. I want to be part of this club. So I joined my local club. Man in the club approached me and said, would you be on the International Water Committee? I was like, sure, because I always wanted to do something more, something global. I, I have files of wanting to start a women's cooperative and I had all these ideas. Mm -hmm. So ended up this particular group, we were doing projects in Central America, primarily El Salvador. We've uh, shifted some to Nicaragua. So started doing work in Central America. Um, and then, you know, it always has to do with a glass of wine and a man. So <laughs> I was dating a guy who ended up in Texas and I was like, hey, let me see if, you know, there's a job there. Um, there's nonprofits everywhere. So I applied, the relationship ended, but I kept getting job notices. This this job ended up in my inbox and one of my best friends was sitting there and she said, Suzanne, this is what you've always wanted to do. So make an impact and travel the world. So it was like, I'm going to, I'm going to apply. They interviewed me and I was like, I, seriously, I'm not arrogant. It sounds arrogant, but I'm like, they could not find a better choice. I've been to Africa. I know what it's like. I know what the travel is like. I'm not a diva. Uh, I have an MBA. I have done work in water. Um, yeah, it just all came together. So I uh, was hired in 2015 as a first executive director. I tell them they have nowhere to go after me, but up, but it's been, a, it's been a great ride. It was like, I sold all my stuff, sold my house and said, I'm going to take a leap of, leap of faith. <laughs> Not one person in Texas loaded up, came out here. And within two weeks, I was on a plane to Africa. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. So all, all you really need is a home base from which to operate or from which to yeah. travel. Right. Yeah. So what was the first uh, experience that you had where you realized that water was such a big issue? I mean, was that back when you started traveling to Africa or when was that? Yeah, I, I, I think we can read the stats. You can hear somebody talk about it, but in, until you're there and you see it yeah. every single time I'm, I, I take a trip. I always say I have my breakdown moment where I see something and I, it's one of those, what am I looking at right now? What, what I remember 
walking across this stream bed and it was dry this little boy was sitting there and he was digging in the sand mm -hmm. and he had this little tiny cup he may have been five years old I'm like what is he doing mm -hmm. and they're like it's called a sand ditch and they dig down into the water starts to come up wait for all the sediment to to settle back yeah. down and then he, he, there's like he's going to cup up the water and take it back to his home to drink and I'm just like you know I start crying I'm like what in the, the world this is not fair mm -hmm. um I remember another moment I was, I was standing in front of a well we had built and this woman, very proud Ethiopian. And I always ask them, how many kids do you have? Cause they're very proud of that. Uh, so I'm talking to her and she's like, I had, I forgot how many, but she said one, uh, one died at, when he was two and a half of waterborne diseases. So that was my break. Everybody's looking at me to respond. And I'm like, I can't respond. I'm just hugging her and we're crying and we're hugging and hugging. And I said, you know what, as long as I'm able, I'll keep doing this work to make sure that other women don't lose their babies. Wow. That, that is, that's deep. That is, that's, that's where you get your passion. Yeah. So that, that was the inspiration and the passion that drove you into um, the work that you're doing. And now what kinds of projects are you doing now? Because I get the feeling that water just gets you into all kinds of other spaces. <laughs> so what's going on right now? <laughs> well, you know, one of the things that, you know, it's hard when you're a nonprofit, it's called mission creep. When you see all these other things that need to happen, they need education, they need, you know, uh, so training, they need all these things. So we're, we're singularly focused on water. So what we do is we build a well in the village. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very simple, either spring protections or, we have a siphon pump. We make it simple because these people, when I say rural villages, many yeah. times I'm walking, there's no road. And I show up and I'm like, we have to bring things in on, you know, donkeys carried by a human yeah. and we build the wells. We train the community about the maintenance, the oversight protection. Uh, we, we require each village to elect a water committee and that 50% of that committee be female because they're responsible for gathering the water. Mm -hmm. And I'm always like, they're the ones that are going to be make sure it gets fixed if it breaks oh so yeah they establish uh, a user fee whether people pay by the jerry can or by the household you know once a year mm -hmm. they have an account book i say let me see your account book and you know they're the there's the money because things things fall apart right things yeah. are going to break yeah. people are like do you go back and you help them i'm like this is about creating self-sufficiency sustainability they don't, mm -hmm. they don't have the technology or the knowledge mm -hmm. how to build a well that's protected and and filtered we're doing that with them hand in hand mm -hmm. we work with the community because it's like you know it's on this farmer's land we got to make sure that he signs off and says it's not my well it's the community's well yeah. and what that does it takes about away that time element that women spend hours walking to dirty sources it's five minutes from the house two minutes from the house and it's say it's a time thing so now they can work on income generating they can mm -hmm. you know cook nutritious meals one woman told me I was like, how's your life changed since you have a well? She says, my husband doesn't beat me anymore. Doesn't beat her anymore? Yes. Whoa. Because she was gathering water, five, five gallons for a family of five or six. Yeah. You've got to go more than once a day. And if it's six miles away, think about how long it takes you to walk yeah. one mile. Yeah, that's you've your got, day. Yeah, you've got 40 pounds on your back. Mm -hmm. So he was angry because he came home from work and there was no food to eat. Mm. Yeah. So on top of all the walking and carrying and everything, she's getting beaten. So, man, that's a that's a life change. There's more than something. Then you look at that and you go, there's more than just water here we need to fix. <laughs> but you, know, and you it's, only do you what know, you can do. You yeah, know? attacks on young girls, harassment, rapes, abductions. Yeah. I mean, that I, I talk to them. I'm like, tell me about what happened. And yeah, it's a real thing that we just, again, it's like one of those, oh, we're putting in wells. This is great. But then you hear about all the things it, it is impacted. It's so crazy. do you refer to other partners that might be able to come in and help with some other extra issues that you see that are going on that this stuff that you don't, you guys don't deal with? Yeah, of course. Uh, we had one donor that came and was like, saw a school where we put a you know, water well in and the kids were sitting on rocks. They would bring rocks from the field and they would. <laughs> That's, those were her, their chairs. <laughs> yes. And so she worked with our partner. We work with NGOs that are in in the countries we don't drill the wells they do yeah. it's it's employment for them we are helping their economy by working with ngos that are located in these countries yeah uh, but yeah we worked this donor worked with our our partner and paid for these desks and they have the video of the kids loading the desk <laughs> in the school and things like that i mean from what you said about um you know 
young girls and you know quitting school when they start their their periods yeah to, you know building like one school a donor out of california contact us were like it was an orphanage and they're like these kids don't have bathrooms and so they wanted a changing room where the young ladies could go in and clean themselves and change their pads and yeah. i mean there's, there's so much need there so much need we work with one nonprofit that works with uh women who are in the sex trade industry mm-hmm. and they give them a place to sleep and you know get a shower but then they also train them uh they have almost like a small business incubator yeah so they can come in and make ceramics they can do sewing things and it's a way for them to say, okay, I can get out of, and it, there's no judgment. They, yeah. they help them with healthcare, with, you know, protection against diseases. They give them condoms, uh, but it's about, it's again, no judgment, but it's about trying to get them and lift them out of that sex trade industry. Yeah. It's amazing um, how far water goes to, to everything that you do, that, you know, to keeping your body clean and that sort of thing. So is this global or do you operate just in African countries? Uh, our, our mission started and it was just focused in Africa. We're very, very small. There's three of us part full-time, three part, uh, part-time folks in my office. So we are very, very small nonprofit, but I think the impact has been huge and it's all because of our donors. Yeah. <clears throat> we, we've funded right now over 1,300 wells and that's water for over 700,000 individuals. So I, when I think back about that, I'm like, you know, the founder started, it was in a Bible study group in a church, in a Lutheran church, and they were studying water or, or hunger and poverty. And somebody spoke about water and they're like, we can do something about this. So started fundraising and the founder was like, he's a visionary. He's like, mm-hmm. I think we could apply for a, you know, 501c3 and we could do this work. So yeah. that's, that's how I got, and we have, we have a project manager in Ethiopia. He's my, I call him my uh, Kaka, Kaka G. He's my brother. <laughs> I, I have a Nigerian brother. I understand. Uh, I understand how that works. Um, so, oh, back to the question about being global. Is it just Africa then? Is that where, where the focus is? Or are there other countries and partners that you connect with? Yeah, we, we're just working in East Africa. Again, we started in Ethiopia. We ex- expanded into Uganda and Tanzania because logistically when I go there, you know, we, we, I think that we did a few wells in Sierra Leone, but it's on the other side of the continent. Yeah. And again, my project manager, he goes between those three countries. So logistically, it just makes you more need sense. You to be able to, to travel without going too far and it being too expensive. Yeah, mm-hmm. I gotcha. Um, interesting to know, because I was going to say, I have somebody that might be a good contact for you that's, um, that operates pretty much in India, but would also work globally. And I still may be able to to see okay. where what's going on with her and she runs some charities that do a lot of what you're talking about um there she actually was raised in the slums of calcutta wow. uh, in india and was a recipient in the last couple of years of mother Teresa award when she herself was a recipient of the good graces of mother Teresa when she was in the slums there so how interesting is that yeah. but um yeah, this is, uh, this, is, this is good to know. And I love the fact that you're small and making such a big impact because a lot of people think you have to be a big NGO or a big organization to be able to impact thousands and thousands a year. And it's not necessarily the case. And I don't know that anything is put upon each one of us. You know, if we have it in our heart to do some good, then doing some good, no matter what it is, is what you need to do. Um, so I, I love the fact that this started very small and started uh, sort of in a Bible study class. So that's great. Um, let's talk about where things are headed now. Well, first, before we do that, I'd love for you to share the story that we were talking about before we went on record about what you're doing in Ethiopia or what your donor and you together were yeah. doing uh, and why, because I think that paints a picture for people. So if you'll share sure. that. Yeah, I, again, mostly what we focused on is putting, you know, individual wells in individual villages, mm-hmm. <clears throat> very rural, but we were approached by a foundation and I'm not sure how they found out about us, but, you know, when people think about doing work in developing countries, it's not, there are a lot of things you have to navigate and know, and mm-hmm. we think we know how to do things and you get there like, that's not the way things work here. That is not real. <laughs> <laughs> so, I know. Yeah. So I, I think they recognized our model and how we were able to accomplish things again, very small. So funded a, a, a fistula hospital, obstetric fistula, and it's a real big problem in Ethiopia is again, these young girls are, you know, nutrition is lacking. So they're very small uh, and they get married at, you know, 13 and 14 years old. So when they give birth, that's when the problems uh, arise and just don't have the health care there. You know, they're still giving birth at home. You mm-hmm. know, there's a lot of cultural implications around all of that. But anyway, that's what we've been working with that 
foundation, they come back to us and there's found uh, clinics in the southern part of, of Ethiopia uh, out of Hawassa. And so they came to us and they said, you know, we want to address the water issues in these clinics. Mm -hmm. uh, so that means water, toilets, showers, sinks for these women, because these women, they go there and it's, it's filthy, it's dirty. They're just dirty cots. Uh, a lot of times they don't, they don't have water. So there's no place to take a shower. You just gave birth and there's no water. Mm -hmm. um, so working with them, they, they wanted a matching uh, uh, budget and it was the budget was at seven, uh, 700,000 outfit all these clinics with again, showers, water. We came back and said, uh, you know, we presented the budget to do the work. They came back and said, we want to match. And so they gave us a check for 350,000. So that means I have to go out and raise more money uh, to match that, but it's, it's going to be great. It's going to be a huge project. Uh, but you know, that that's what this is about. It's about health, you know, it's water, but the implications go very, very deep when you're talking about going to the hospital, going to the clinics. Can you imagine going there to give birth and there's not a toilet, there's not a shower, there's not a sink, there is no water. Yeah, and I, I've heard the same thing uh, in schools that one of the things that we did this past year is really strange is we did a, um, a global girls poetry booklet. We solicited poems from girls all over the world, 14 to 18. And boy, if you ask a teenage girl what's on her mind and to write a poem about it, you get what's on her mind. And one of the things that, that, that it raised, one of the issues it raised is that we understood that a lot of girls would not use um, the toilets at school, the bathrooms at school, for a lot of reasons, A, that they thought they'd be, you know, taken advantage of by, by boys, but they were told that the water was not clean to begin with. Um, and so they didn't want to be seen as somebody that might be on their menstrual cycle and th then they would be ostracized for that. There's a lot of reasons that they weren't using the, the facilities there. Yes. So, uh, yeah, there's just a whole lot of, um, uh, you know, situations that come up that prevent. Um, so it's not just that the water that is unclean is, is causing issues. Is it them not drinking enough water? So they wouldn't have to go to the bathroom because yes. they're it's nasty. And you know, all, there's a lot of trickle downs that, yeah. that I, I've done that. I'm like, I'm not drinking water. any water. Cause I'll have to go to the bathroom. I'm yeah, the <laughs> I've done that when I'm there. Yeah. So you get that. And so that it really becomes a problem, but, um, and like you say, it just it snowballs downhill from there. Yeah. So, you know, we were talking before about some of the things that might be coming up this year. And you mentioned that one of the things is you've got this drive to, to, to get that matching uh, grant monies. What kind of people might you need to meet? And first of all, where are you going? Are there any other situation? You've got to travel some more. What types of projects are coming up? And then what type of people might you need to help you move those projects? Sure. Yeah. As I mentioned before, we work primarily in Ethiopia, Uganda, and Tanzania. Mm -hmm. uh, we work with NGOs in the country to implement these wells. Uh, you know, we're, we're trying to locate another NGO in Tanzania to work with. Um, so that, that's one thing it's like, and that's part of, that's part of the success process is like vetting them to make sure that they're, you know, registered with the government. They have experience in water. They know what they're doing. They have a drilling machine. They, you mm -hmm. know, look at their books. So that, that's one of the things. The other thing is, you know, with those clinics, I've been trying to think about what are other foundations, other groups that are interested in maternal health, the health of, you know, mothers and children, you know, again, rotary, that's one of their focus areas. So we're talking mm -hmm. to some rotary folks. Um, you know, I keep thinking there's got to be an OBGYN group who's philanthropic or, you know, is interested in this. Because again, you know, a lot of people who are in the medical field, they get back. You know, I have a good friend who goes to Africa, Central America to do surgeries. It's part of his, like, I want to get back and help people. Yeah. And, you know, with them, it's like, it's such a big impact. I see you know, children with the, you know, cleft palates. I see all these things. I'm like, in our, in, you know, in our country, that'd be taken care of when they were, you know, just a tiny, tiny baby. And now this child is growing up and may or may not have the opportunity for operations. So I think some, you know, medical groups and even, you know, some companies that, you know, I keep looking at <clears throat> large companies that have presence in these countries, you know, like a Coca-Cola, um, you know, Heineken, Mm -hmm. uh, those because they need water you got to have water to make cokes mm -hmm. you got to have water to make beer so is that something that you know they could partner with us uh in doing giving back doing some good um so yeah okay uh, that that helps a lot um the, as far as the partnership end of things goes and it sounds like you're getting ready to head off to to, to make a trip around to all these different locations right 
Yep. So uh, this will be good if anybody's watching and is in one of those locations. We have a lot of viewership out of Africa okay. and, or has some sort of information or content that would be uh, of interest to Suzanne. Certainly, if you want to go through us, we're happy to make that connection for you. But we'll, yep. pop, we'll pop in all the links that Suzanne shares with us. If you want to go to www.frontrunnersinnovate.com, you will see this interview, the audio version of this interview, and all the information that Suzanne provides us and all the links and ways that you can connect with her. Um, if you feel like you want an official route to her, then we're happy to, to make that connection for you. Absolutely. So, and you're wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, you know, God planted you in the right place. <laughs> this is, this I, is I, I firmly believe that when people are like, how do you make those trips? And I'm like, those are what motivate me when I, these women come up to me and they're hugging me and they, yeah. you know, you know, without them being able to speak <clears throat> that they are telling you how appreciative they are mm -hmm. for having clean water. Mm -hmm. That's huge. That is huge. Uh, I know it and I feel, and I know most everybody who's watching this feels the same way. So thank you on behalf of everyone. And uh, let's, let's see what we can do to keep, keep you connected. If you'll stay on for just a second, I'm going to say goodbye to everyone. Again, go to www.frontrunnersinnovate.com and you'll see all the information Suzanne has to provide. So thank you, everybody. Bye -bye. Thank you.